Okay, hello and welcome everyone. In this video, I'm gonna talk about first degree price discrimination. I'm gonna do it primarily with an example using equations. So first degree price discrimination is a situation where the firm is gonna charge exactly each individual's willingness to pay for whatever is the product. So that's hard to do because first, you need to be able to identify your consumers and what is their maximal willingness to pay. You've gotta be able to charge them that price and then prevent them from turning around and reselling to people who might have a higher willingness to pay. So this is almost impossible in practice. With big data, you could probably get something pretty close, but of course, consumers are not gonna be happy to find out that firms practicing first degree price discrimination. So we primarily use this as sort of like the gold standard that, that a monopoly or a firm with market power might be striving for. Though in terms of like actually seeing it in practice, there's not, uh, there's not a whole lot of cases that do this. Although there's things that kind of approximate it depending on what information a firm would be able to have about its consumers. Okay, so to make this concrete, suppose we have a demand that's given by, so quantity is gonna be 36 minus P. Uh, this is my demand, my inverse demand, what we usually graph is gonna be price is equal to 36 minus Q. It's the exact same relationship, it's just price in terms of quantity instead of quantity in terms of price. Let's assume constant marginal cost of 12. Okay, and so I've got this written out. Here would be the monopoly solution. This is exactly the same exercise that I did in my third degree price discrimination video. So the monopoly's marginal revenue, it's gonna have the same vertical intercept, twice the slope as my inverse demand. I've got the calculus explanation in that video if you go back and see it. Anyway, so the monopoly wants to produce the quantity where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. Okay, here's marginal revenue. Let's set this equal to marginal cost. Let's find the quantity, it's gonna be 12. Let's evaluate the inverse demand curve at the quantity of 12 and find we'll, we'll sell at price of 24. So what the monopoly would do, facing this demand curve and this marginal revenue curve, that's at a quantity of 12, a price of 24. What would the competitive market do? Well, the competitive market would produce where price is equal to marginal cost. Here's our marginal cost, constant average cost, right? And then here's my demand that gives us our price. Okay, 36 minus Q is equal to 12. Price is equal to marginal cost. This gives us a quantity of 24 and a price of 12. So the competitive market would produce 24 units. The monopoly is only gonna produce half of that, 12 units. So there's substantial inefficiency. This triangle right here, we'll call that deadweight loss. What's going on here is that there's a lot of units, units 12 through 24, that these consumers on the demand curve with willingness to pay between 12 and up to 24, their willingness to pay is higher than the cost to produce those units. Nevertheless, these goods aren't produced by our monopolist. Why? Well, if the monopolist produces all the way out here, there's gonna be zero producer surplus, zero profits. That's what happens with the competitive market. So why would they wanna do that? Instead, they reduce their output that drives up the price by the law of demand, and this becomes profits or producer surplus, and this would be consumer surplus. So that's what a single price monopolist does, but I wanna tell you about first degree price discrimination. What happens then? Well, first let's have our comparison. Here's exactly what I was saying before. This consumer surplus is defined as the area under the demand curve above the price. Producer surplus is the area under the price and or under is the area below the price and above the supply curve or above the cost curve in this case. And then deadweight loss corresponds to the units that are foregone, that are not produced. Okay, first degree price discrimination involves charging each consumer exactly their willingness to pay. So then the demand curve is the same as the marginal revenue curve. So I've got to make this marginal revenue curve become, you know, lay right over the demand curve. Why? Well, if you're charging each person exactly their price, then the additional contribution to revenue that you're getting from one more unit sold is exactly their willingness to pay. So the demand curve becomes the marginal revenue curve. So that's this right here. The outcome? Well, the outcome with first degree price discrimination is going to be setting exactly the same quantity that the competitive market would be producing at. However, rather than this all being consumer surplus, it's gonna be producer surplus because the price you're, you're setting for each unit is exactly corresponding to the consumer's willingness to pay, the height of the demand curve at that unit. All right, so you produce 24 units. The first unit sold by this monopolist would go for right around $36. The last unit sold would go for right around $12. You wouldn't sell the 25th unit because now the cost of producing the 25th unit is 12, but the most somebody would pay for it is something less than 12 because the demand curve is below. Okay, so now let's make our comparison between first degree price discrimination and like ordinary monopoly. Interestingly, 
The consumers with willingness to pay on the demand curve right here between 12 and 24 are benefiting in some sense when they're able to buy the product under first degree price discrimination because they're not even served. That's part of deadweight loss if we have a single price monopolist that's setting the price of 24. So they benefit from our first degree price discrimination regime. Obviously, however, the consumers with willingness to pay between 24 and up to 36, they're doing worse with first degree price discrimination. They were served either way. They're able to, they were, there's 12 units sold whether we have a single price monopolist or a first degree or one practicing first degree price discrimination. However, when there's price discrimination, they're getting charged exactly their willingness to pay instead of that price of 24 that they are getting from our single price monopolist. So the consumers lying on this part of the demand curve are better off with first degree price discrimination because they're served when as previously they wouldn't even get this product. These units 12 through 24 weren't even produced by our single price monopolist. However, these consumers right here, they're worse off because they're charged the higher price all the way up to their willingness to pay. Whereas if we had a single price monopolist, the price would have been 24. So, okay, go ahead and conclude. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, do whatever you want.